Good morning, welcome back to video number three in our budgeting series. Well, by now you should have your paycheck direct deposited into your financial institution. You should also have your sub account set up to where your primary bills money is going to go so it can automatically be electronically transferred out of the account to pay for those bills. And you also should have your secondary bills figured out to know what needs to stay into the other account where you are going to use a debit card from. If you are not quite there yet, then I encourage you to go back to video number one and video number two to get yourself prepared for what we are going to tackle in today's video, which is going to be the long awaited envelope system. This is probably the one that most of you have been waiting for the most. So I am very happy to bring it to you today. Just like in the previous videos, if you're using the budgeting binder, this is where you're going to resource it again to do the envelopes. If not, you're probably like me and you have all of your documents saved on the desktop of your computer. Again, it's going to be whatever method works for you. We are also not going to need to resource our bill's primary page for the envelopes because that money is already taken care of and that is the beauty. We've already got part of the income set aside and it's all set up electronically. You don't have to worry about it. On the other hand, you are going to need to resource your bill's secondary page. Let's take a look at that. As you can see, we already have a couple expenses left in the account where we can use a debit card because it makes it much easier to use a debit card when paying for groceries and gas. On the other hand, if you are leaving a lot of the other expenses in that account, a lot of times you're going to tap into them and you're going to cut yourself short and that is where the envelopes come in handy. So for instance, we have house cleaning, dry cleaning, car washes, car maintenance, hair care, all of those good things. If you get your nails done, those are all going to be pulled out and they are going to go into an envelope. Let's move on to the envelope system document. This again is where you are going to resource those envelopes. And what I try to do is plan ahead. Now, if you're going to cut yourself short and you're not going to be able to pay your monthly bills that are coming from your primary account, or you're not going to be able to get groceries for your family or gas to put in your tank to get to work, you may not be able to plan ahead. This is where you are going to have to learn to buckle down a little bit, work together with your spouse or significant other, and find out where you can start to save more money. Some of you may get a tax refund this year, and this would be a great opportunity if you don't have debt to pay off with that tax refund to start putting money in the envelopes to plan ahead. What I like to do when I am filling the envelopes is I like to think about three months ahead. But again, my husband and I are in a financial position where we can do that. It took time to get there. You will get there. It takes discipline. It takes execution and it takes keeping one another accountable. There's nothing wrong with keeping your partner accountable when you are trying to get yourself to live better with your finances and work towards financial freedom. So for instance, we already have January already covered because it is behind us. We already have the February expenses behind us because everything has been paid for. I am already pulling money to put into the March envelopes as well as April and into May. The other thing to bear in mind is if it's a large expense, let's say December when we jump into Christmas and we have some huge expenses there, I am already filling envelopes to pay for those. But again, we are in a financial position where we can. If your question is going to be, how can I save for Christmas time when I can barely pay my bills? That's going to be a big difference. And again, you need to work together with your spouse, sit down, have an open dialogue and figure out where you can be putting your money. This is a great goal for you to work towards and you will get there again with discipline. You'll get there. I promise you. I am going to show you how this works. And what I decided to do was I decided to work right out of our zip pouch just as it is. I did not do anything to make this look any different than what it looks like. You can make things look pretty or you can make them functional. My key is I want things to be functional. 
This is exactly how I pulled out the envelope. So it's not even zipped up because one of the daughters had to put a church program brochure that is coming up because she knows we are going to have to start pulling money out for this. So our daughter, Carly, who is in 11th grade, already knew this is where you want to put it. She put the information on the calendar. She told me about it. She put the application inside here. She already filled out an application and put her deposit in but she knows we still have payments to make, so she stuck it in here because she knows that is what I'm going to resource twice a month when I fill the envelopes. Again, my husband and I are working out of a payment system of twice a month. We work out of one paycheck, his paycheck from the corporation that he works for, he gets paid on the 1st and the 15th, that is when I fill the envelopes. Your envelopes are going to be filled when you get paid. If you get paid weekly, you're gonna fill your envelopes weekly. If you get paid bi-weekly, you're going to fill your envelopes bi-weekly. If your spouse gets paid twice a month like my husband does, but you get paid weekly, you're gonna to have to figure out a system. You can do it. Take the time to sit down and figure out how you're gonna do it, where the money is coming to go into the envelopes, and then fill them. So let's start pulling things out and sharing with you what we have. So I have a host stack here of Chase, bank withdrawal tickets. This is what I'm going to fill out twice a month when I'm going to pull the money out for the envelopes. No need to worry. The number at the bottom is not my account number. I uh, have a straggler envelope here because you never know when you need to make a new envelope. So you always want to keep a handy box of envelopes around. I have a certain place in a linen closet where I keep all of this. I have a whole shelf in my linen closet dedicated just for the components that go with this. I have a couple more papers here. My sixth grade daughter has a camp coming up. There was a payment plan to pay for this camp session. They broke it down where you paid four installments of $25 to equal $100. So I have all the information that I need there to make the payments. This little yellow post-it note is exactly how it looked when I took it to our bank on February 15th when we got paid. So I have the whole breakdown here. It actually says, please give cash back in the following increments. Then I list $100 bills, $50 bills, $20 bills, 10, five, one. You catch me and you come up with the amount that you are going to pull out from this pay period to fill envelopes. My total was $906 in cash to fill the envelopes that I have in this pouch. I filled out my withdrawal ticket, I attached it to that post-it note and I put my driver's license to it. I pulled up to the window, put it in a little canister and sent it in. I just do this right through the drive-through. They are used to seeing me come in twice a month and do this. And voila, this is what we got back. So we have all of our cash right here. We have a whole breakdown and it's a stack of every type of bill that I asked for. From there, I come home and I start filling the envelopes. Here is the stack of envelopes that I just pulled out of the zip pouch. I'm gonna read them off to you because I am sure many of you are very interested. A lot of these envelopes already have money in them because again, I'm pulling out each month to work my way up to something and we will talk more about that as we go. The very first envelope is sixth grade camp, payment of $25 for Chloe Hensel. $25 from that stack of cash that I just shared with you will go in here and I will send this into school with her. We have one more payment. I already have it documented when I need to make that next payment. I will fill an envelope out and keep it in here if I need to. It's whatever you need to do to make sure that you are always staying on top of things. I have Easter. We are already pulling money out for Easter. The budget for Easter this year is $200. So you can tell that if I'm pulling $50 out for Easter, there are going to be four paychecks. I'm gonna be pulling money out to get this envelope filled. So $50 will go in here. Next time we get paid, another $50 will go in here, so on and so forth. We have nails. <laughs> I have $29 on here. For some reason, when I got my nails done the other day, she charged me 30. Normally, $29 covers my nails and the tip, so I was blown away and thankfully I had some, some petty cash on me, but I pull out $29. Now it does vary sometimes, so I actually do a breakdown. I do 120, I do 15, and I do four ones. Just in case it's not the same price and maybe I'm not paying as much, I like to have a few dollar bills to work with. So that's how I do that. 
On this one, we have Kaylee's birthday. We have $8 on there. We spend $50 on Kaylee for her birthday. Her birthday is in March. So I have gradually been pulling out money to fill this envelope. There's quite a few bills in here because if you're pulling out $8, think about it. You're getting a five and three ones. That's gonna get thick. And then what I do when I go shopping for Kaylee's birthday, which I'll be honest, I already have her gift done pretty much. I have spent $41.91 on her. The receipt is in here and I also made a note on the outside that I owe my business account the $50 once this gets filled, but I'm keeping the money in here right now. And what happened, I was out shopping with Kirsten and she found something for Kaylee. Well, I didn't have Kaylee's envelope on me, nor is Kaylee's envelope completely filled. So I used my business account, which is not where we pay for Kaylee's gift from. It's a separate account. Again, we pay our bills out of the paycheck that my husband gets from the corporation that he works for. We don't pay for these bills out of my business account. We also don't pay for these bills out of my husband's business account because he has a business account as well on top of the main household account that we work from. So I make a little note for myself. So you can see I am using a debit card and paying myself back, but I strongly encourage you continue with the envelope system. We have car registration, $16. We pay for our car registrations once a year in January. My husband has every one of the cars that every one of us have under his name. So it's a big expense in January and that is coming right after the holidays. So we plan ahead. I pull $16 out every time we get paid and fill this envelope. So it will get really thick. Now let me explain to you what I do when it starts to get really thick. One of the times that I go in to do our banking, one of the two times a month, if this is really thick, I might take the money out of here and do an exchange. So I might have a couple hundred dollars in here. I might exchange that for two $100 bills just to keep this a little lighter. So that's a tip. You don't have to do it. You can wait till the end, whatever. What will happen is come January, when this envelope has several hundred dollars in it, we don't pay for the car registration with cash. We will deposit this money into our account, the account that we use a debit card from, and we will pay for it that way. Family vacations, I have $100 on here. Right now I've been pulling out $100 per pay period to go towards our family vacation. Now I will let you know a lot of our family vacations don't come out of this paycheck. A lot of our family vacations in big expenses like that come out of a combination of my husband's business account and my business account, which again are two separate uh, incomes that are coming in. Christmas party 2018, $50 a paycheck. Do the math, it's expensive just for our Christmas party. I started pulling this $50 out on the very first paycheck in January. This will cover the expense of that Christmas party. It makes a world of a difference when you already have all of that money versus trying to come up with an extra $1,200 to host a Christmas party when it's already tight during the holidays. Bobby's birthday is coming up in just a few days, and so is McKenna's. We spend $50 on Bobby. Bobby is McKenna's boyfriend. We spend $50 on him for his birthday. I've been pulling out $10 each time. I know it seems small. It seems minuscule. I get that, but trust me, this system works. This system will keep you in check. When you have a big family and you have all of these expenses, it is much easier to do this than to always have that $50. For us, it is. It really does. It makes a big difference. Even though you're thinking, what's $10? $10 adds up. Anybody who knows anything about saving and investing in money, they know darn well what I'm talking about. Recently rehired the cleaning lady. I have her come about once a month, once a month, once every six weeks. I pull out $40 per paycheck to pay her for each cleaning, which is about $80. I have a little slush envelope for Chloe. I do a little breakdown so that she has some ones, she has a five, she has a 10. Sometimes she empties it, sometimes she's pulling from another envelope just to get her by. So sometimes I think about making this one larger, but I also try to keep her in check and keep her on a budget as well and make her thinking. 
it's a good thing to do. Teach your kids these things. I'm not going to go through all of the rest of the envelopes because it is pretty much the same. It's birthdays, it's Mother's Day, it's planning ahead for swim team registration, which will be coming up in April, and that's a big expense. It's things like that that you just plan ahead. It can be vacations. Again, look at our envelope system page. But I want to share these two envelopes with you. One is gas and one is grocery. So every two weeks when we get paid, I do one grocery store and my husband does another grocery store and we do it right away and that comes out of the debit account. That comes out of not the account where the bills primary are, but where the bills secondary are. And we get those groceries right away. The other thing that we do is we both fill up our tank right then and there, right on payday. Basically, I go to the bank I do the banking system to fill the envelopes. I go get the groceries that I handle. I fill up my tank and I come home and then I disperse the money. I have a system. That's what I like. I like systems. I think that systems help to keep us in check and they keep a fluid system going. So I strongly encourage you come up with a system. Work it out with your spouse. So I fill up the tank. So we're starting fresh on payday with fresh groceries. We're stocked and we've got full tanks of gas, perfect. What happens, because we've got to wait a good solid two weeks, sometimes it's a little more than a solid two weeks, because again, we get paid twice a month, so sometimes it can go over two weeks. What if you need gas again? Well, I keep an envelope in my car under my dashboard with $40 in it. So if I need to put more gas in my car, this covers it. I know it does because you kind of figure things out if you're paying attention. A lot of times I don't even empty this envelope, but what I do is when I do have to put more gas in my tank when it's in between pay periods, I will use my debit card, generally my business card, and I will pay myself back. So let's say I put $35 in, I will take $35 out of here. I'll do some sort of breakdown. I do keep extra cash if I do need to break something down, but that's how I do it because I'm not gonna walk in and pay cash for gas. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen, trust me. The other thing that I do too is a lot of times we may need to get groceries between pay periods. So I always keep $50, same place, up in an envelope under the dashboard. Now a lot of times I will take this into the grocery store with me because it's nothing to use a $50 bill to pay for some groceries. So I may go in and I might spend $15 one time. I put the change in here and I put the receipt in here. I might need to go again in three or four days because maybe I ran out of something and I need to replenish some produce or something like that. I have the envelope that I can carry in. So that is how the whole envelope system works and I hope this is really helpful it is a great method. It, it keeps you from overspending. That's the biggest thing that you will find out when you implement using the envelopes is you'll find that you don't overspend. It really keeps you in check. Let me share another little thing that we do. Let's take Kaylee's birthday, for example. My husband and I spend $50 on Kaylee for her birthday. That is my oldest daughter's boyfriend's daughter. Okay, so my oldest daughter, Kirsten, her boyfriend, Tim, has a daughter. Right now, we're at $41 and some change that we have spent on her. So we have a little bit more to spend on her. Let's say Kirsten contacts me and says, Hey, Mom, I found some cute sandals that I'd like to apply to Kaylee's gift, but it's going to be more than your $50 allowance. She pays the difference. So let's just say those sandals are $15. Well, now I'm over the $50. Kirsten will pay me the difference. That is how we've always done it. It's worked out really well. Uh, same thing with Christmas. My mom might tell me I'm going to spend $40 on each grandchild. Would you mind getting the girls' gifts for me because you know what they like and then I will just pay you. She will Venmo me the money because we love Venmo. Venmo's free. We love it. What I will do is let's say I bought one of the girls something but it was $50. She still is only Venmoing me $40 per person and I just pay the difference. So that's something we've always done in our families. We do it on my side, we do it on my husband's side. So I wanted to add that in there. So there you go, folks. This is the envelope system. This basically covers the whole budgeting. We were able to tackle it in three videos, which is so awesome. And I like the fact that you worked your way into it. If you have any questions whatsoever, comments, please leave them down below. I am going to do a follow-up video, maybe more than one, that's going to be a Q&A. I have already been presented with 
wonderful questions and I have answered some of those on Snapchat. So please make sure you are following me on Snapchat. I share so many life skills there on the daily. I talk about marriage advice. I talk about motivation. I talk about fitness, diet, you name it. You're really missing out if you're not following me on that platform. It's, it's really where you're going to get the best of me. But I have been keeping track of a lot of wonderful questions. A big one is, why don't you just use a credit card and get the points and get the cash back? Well, I don't support that at all. And we'll get into reasons why I did share the reason on Snapchat, but I will be happy to share that analogy with you here in video. So Q&As will be coming up next. So if you have any great questions, I probably won't be able to cover them all, but I sure will try. Um, maybe sometimes there will be a question and I can say, hey, if you go back to video one, your answer is right there. So make sure you're watching all the videos, getting yourself caught up with the whole system, Send your questions and I will tackle it from there. So again, thank you for joining me. Don't forget anything that I'm wearing that's new. I always link. Love this top. It is new. I will have it linked and um, I will see you in the next video. All right, take care. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it.